All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at many of the properties that go along with CSS and in specific, the text and font properties. So I'm gonna switch back here to the page we've been working on and I'm gonna delete all of this code for the head section CSS. And I'm also gonna delete this inline CSS rule as I just wanna work with my external style sheet for now. I'm gonna leave my header one tag intact just like we had it. And I'll be doing the bulk of the work inside of this style sheet. So just remember that this header one is in fact right here and all the work we're gonna be doing is for this header one selector. So some of the font properties that are available inside of CSS, we've already looked at color. You can do a certain number of color names like red, green, blue, orange. There are a There is a defined set. Um, typically, instead of using color names, you would actually use hexadecimal values or RGB values. So hexadecimal color for red is pound sign FF0000. This is hexadecimal for red. And if we were gonna use RGBA or RGB, we would say RGB, and then we would say 255 colon zero, col or sorry, comma zero. And this means 255 in the red channel, zero in the green, zero in the blue, which would turn this red as well. So either RGB or hex is supported in CSS. And you'll almost always see them in one of those two formats. I'm just gonna stick to red for now because it's a little bit easier to see the color name and associate that with a color in the HTML. So color is the first property we've looked at. Now let's look at another one here. I'll just hit return and I'm gonna do a new declaration and this one's gonna control the actual font face. And this one is font-family colon and I'll just set this to Arial for right now. And I'm gonna save and come back and refresh. And you can see that that did in fact change the heading of the font to Arial. Now, one thing to be aware of with HTML fonts is I can't put any font name I have inside of here and expect it to work. The font names you list inside of your font family categories will only work if the user has that font on their system installed. So there's maybe 10 or 15 fonts that are known as web safe fonts, which are fonts that are essentially installed on all computers regardless of the operating system or how old they are. If you do wanna use custom typography, you'll have to move into what's known as CSS3 font embedding, which we'll look at in much later CSS video tutorials. All right, now we have the font family declared. Let's look at a couple more of the font properties. One of them being the size. I can say font dash size, and I'll just set this to maybe 36 points to illustrate how this changes and let's come back and save and refresh and you can see that that increases the size of that heading to 36 points let's do a couple more here font dash style is another property and this enables us to do italicized font so i can say font dash style slash italic let's save and refresh this you can see in fact that does make this font italicized Another one of these properties is font-weight, and I can set this to bold. Now, by default, the header one tag is already bold. So if I was to save and refresh this, you can notice there's no change because it's already bolded. Font-weight is how I can control that. Property here is what we call font-variant, and I can set this to a few different values, one of those being small caps. Let's save and refresh and small caps makes everything a capital letter, and the very first letter is an uppercase capital letter. So that's what small caps does. Another one of the font properties is the, light, the, the height of the line itself, and that is declared via line-height, and I can set this equal to, let's just do something quite large, let's say 100 pixels, and I'll save this and come back and refresh. And you'll notice it shifts a little bit, but when I highlight the text, now the entire line is 100 pixels tall. So that's essentially the, the line height property. Another property that isn't necessarily related to the font, but the actual text is what we call word-spacing. And I'm gonna set this equal to 50 pixels. And this is gonna be the space in between each word. So if I refresh, you can see here, there's a 50 pixel space in between each of the words. So I'm gonna set this back to um, 10 pixels to make it much smaller. And just like I can space out the words, I can also do letter-spacing. 
and I'll set this equal to, let's maybe say 20 pixels, save and refresh, and that's the space in between each of the individual letters. All right, I'm gonna jump back to the CSS sheet and let's look at a couple other, couple more of these properties. I'm gonna set this back to five pixels and I'll set this to five pixels as well, just so that paragraph isn't so goofy, and or the header one rather. Now the next set of properties are also going to, going to affect the text. Uh, the first being text-align. And this is how I can align a paragraph of text. I'll just set this equal to right for now and save and refresh. And you can see that that aligns the entire header one to the right side of its element. Possible values here would be right, center, left. You can also do justified text through CSS. Another property here is text-decoration, and I can set this to underline. So let's save and refresh here, and that just underlines the text. I can do overlines, I can do strike through, and many other text decoration options. You just look up text decoration on the W3C. I guess I'll mention all of these different properties have multiple values that can go inside of each one. So to find out exactly what you can and can't do for text decoration, for example, you'd have to look up on the W3C's resource and to see a, an exhaustive list of all of those different properties. All right, another one of the properties is what's called text-indent. So we'll see text-indent, and we can set this equal to a value. I'll just say 50 pixels. And in order to see this work, I need to set the text alignment back to left. So we'll save that and refresh here. And you can see that just adds simply a 50 pixel indentation for the text. Let's just add a few more properties here. Another one is the text-shadow. Now this is a CSS3 property, so it will only work in the latest versions of the popular browsers. But just to show you the syntax, it's, uh, I'll just say two pixels, two pixels, two pixels, green and we'll save and refresh. And this kind of adds a little bit of a drop shadow behind your text. Now these values are horizontal and vertical offset, the amount of blur, and the color of the shadow. So if I set this blur value to something like 15 and save and refresh, you can see that blurs that text out quite a bit more. All right, another property of the text is what we call a text-transform. And I can set this equal to lowercase and save and refresh. And you can see now all these are lowercase. Now the problem here, these are actually capitalized letter. That's because if you'll recall earlier, I had font dash variant small caps. So if I was to delete this rule, then that rule should work. Now this is a good opportunity to, opportunity to show you how to do a CSS comment. We learned how to do HTML comments before. CSS comments are a little bit different. I can write notes to myself in a CSS sheet by doing a slash, then a star, and note goes here, and then a star and a slash. And again, this won't actually be computed as CSS. This is just a simple note to myself. So oftentimes people, in order to test things in their CSS sheet, I can just come up to this rule and I can do a star slash, and then come to the end and do a just the opposite or a slash star star slash you can see that just essentially invalidates that line so now when i save and refresh over here it is in fact all in lowercase and i can change this to uppercase save and refresh now everything is in uppercase so you do have a few options inside of this text transform property as well now there's just a couple of more things i want to mention here with the font properties for css you can see there's quite a few of these properties for fonts and texts, and it does get quite a bit uh, lengthy at times. And there is a shorthand variant of some of these properties. So I wanna show you how to do the CSS shorthand for some of the font properties. Now, before we get into that, I wanna mention this font family property. Now it does say font family because this is supposed to take an entire series of fonts. So I could say something like Arial and maybe Georgia and Verdana, and then maybe sans-serif. Now what this means is it's first going to try the font Arial. If the user doesn't have that font installed, it moves on to Georgia. If they don't have that one, it moves on to Verdana. If they don't have that one, lastly, it says give me any sans-serif font to display, 
and I will use that. So these, this font family declaration will have a list of fonts that it tries to use before it finally gives up and just uses any old font that the user has installed, which is a sans serif font. To demonstrate the shorthand property of the font, I'm going to remove all of this CSS here so that we can just have our font property. So I'll delete everything inside of here. And a lot of those can be rolled into a single font declaration. So I just call font. Now the order of these properties does matter. The order is font dash style is the first one, comma font dash variant. And then we have font dash weight. Then we have font dash size. We have line dash height. And then finally, we actually have the font dash family. So all of these commas separate each one of those individual properties, and they do have to be specified in this order. It's also worth noting that all of these properties are exceptional, except for font size and font family. Those are required if you do the font property this way. You have to have size and font family. The rest are optional properties. So let's do a complete, I'm gonna delete all this, and we'll just write out a simple rule to kind of illustrate how this works. So we'll start off and we're gonna call the font property. Now, if you remember the order there, the first one is the font style. So I'll just call this italic. And we're going to do separate this with a space here. And the second one is the font variant. So I can say small caps. The third style here, or the third option rather, is the font weight. I can call this bold. And the next option here is the font size. And I'll just call this one 36 pixels slash 10 pixels. This is the font size and then that slash. And then this is actually the font, um, the line height of the font. And then lastly, we have our font family. So I can say Arial, comma, Georgia, Georgia sans dash serif followed by the semicolon. So this is an entire font declaration all on one line. I can save this and let's come back and refresh. And you can see that that um, is being applied there. All of those different properties from left to right. And uh, that's how you can do the shorthand version of a CSS font. The last thing I wanna note here is when you're declaring these font families, if you happen to have a two word font, so meaning a font family that's not just a single word, you do need to enclose that inside of quotation marks. For example, instead of Arial, if I had, let's say, Times New Roman, because this is three words, that does need to go inside of quotation marks. So anytime you have a multi-word font name, you do need to enclose that there. And that should do it for all the font properties. That was quite a bit there, but uh, hopefully you learned a little bit in that series.